Some of you would look better if you were wearing a mask today. So I, you can say the same about me. I've got mine. So no, I don't have anything to say. We're excited about uh, uh, six practices. Going to have number seven today, and it's fun to get back in the gym again. But uh, uh, I do wear this mask the entire practice. I've worn it every second of every practice, and uh, we'll continue to do that. So that's the world we live in right now. Okay, Josh, then JB. Josh Graham, then JB Ricks. Coach, thank you for spending the time. Um, with the amount of freshmen that you're going to be relying on this year, in what ways do you think you're going to have to adapt your style to the personnel that you have? It, you sort of cut out there. Did you say re relying on freshmen? Is that what the question was, Josh? Uh, you're relying on freshmen, but in what okay. ways are you going to yeah. have to adapt your style to the personnel? Okay. Uh, well, I think the way we've done it every year is uh, try to go slower the more freshmen we have try to accelerate it, make it much more competitive. The older we are, we've had, it. Uh, you know, this is year, is it 17 or 18? 18. 18, okay. Uh, so in 18 years at one spot, we've had uh, uh, everything you can possibly have. But I do believe when you have freshmen, you've got to go a little slower, uh, push them, push them, push them, and then put your arm around them, push them, push them, push them, and then put your arm around them. Uh, we've had teams before that uh, almost everyone coming back was a veteran, and we pushed those guys a little harder and they'd go faster. But uh, you also have to be able to make your adjustments every day because you get an attitude, I mean, excuse me, information every day about what's going on. JB, then Andrew. Hey, Coach. JB Ricks here from Spectrum News One. Thanks so much for taking out the time. Good to see you again. Um, my question to you is, uh, I heard Garrison mention um, during during his availability how different things are right now, like the players can't be in the locker room at the same time, and there's just so many adjustments um, that have had to be made. And then, you know, you start thinking about the way things were before this pandemic hit, you know, where we would have the group sessions in the locker rooms and just, you know, stadiums, just 20,000 people and all that. From your perspective, are you optimistic that we will ever get back to that point? Um, or to be more specific, are you optimistic that we'll get back to that point of just a regular, the regular norm, norm, norm that we had um, before you retire? <laughs> I'm no plan on retiring tomorrow, so I don't know that it'll happen before tomorrow. But, uh, you know, I am optimistic, but I'll say this, uh, JB, I don't know that we'll ever get back to the normal that we knew. And I think, you know, because we don't know how effective the vaccine is going to be. We don't know how long it's going to be around. We don't know that five years from now that we'll look down the road and think of this uh, virus as similar to what the flu has been. Uh, I don't know the, that information, but my gut feeling is that we're not going to get back to, quote, that normal for several years. I really, I really don't see that. Uh, what we're doing, I think, is... Uh, fantastic. I mean, guys, every coach on my staff wears a mask the entire practice. Some coaches are going to be uncomfortable wearing coaches during a game. I'm not one of those. I'm going to wear a mask during a game. And so to me, it's the adjustments that we have to make by being more intelligent that we can have a safer world. Uh, I loved uh, the old normal. I'm going to figure out a way to love this normal as well. Uh, yes, uh, um, the press conferences with all of you guys here, I bet you it seems to go smoother and I would be out of here quicker. So I would like that part as well. Uh, but that's not the world we're in right now. But I think we'll have college basketball. I don't know how uh, many people, if any, will be in the stands to see it. That's not up to me. It's up to the local health departments. I believe we'll have uh, a year of college basketball that people will enjoy. Uh, I loved watching the World Series game last night. I watched almost six full innings of, of the World Series game, and neither one of the teams were the Yankees. So it's something that I still enjoy doing. Uh, but I don't think that we're going to get back to where we were just last year in the next five or six months. No, I don't believe that. Andrew Jones followed by Deanna King. Hey, Coach, uh, Andrew said that you're still ticked off about last year and you constantly remind them about that. How much fuel can you get from that with this group? We'll find out, Andrew, and I do remind them because you just think uh, six games we lost where the other team had the last shot and they made all six. Three games we lost where we didn't get a box out and nobody in the history of college basketball has emphasized boxing out more than I do. 
So when we have two possessions in a row in practice last Friday, when we don't box out, you darn right. I went absolutely stone dead crazy, and they better expect that until they change their behavior. Are you pleased in any way with how the returning guys have responded to that? Uh, yeah, but I'm really, frankly, my dear, I don't care. Uh, I mean, it's it really is. I mean, we're the ones that screwed it up. And so, you know, if uh, if one of those guys was involved in a no box out and they get the ball score, you ought to remember that the rest of your life. I remember it every every day. So uh, I'm not against bringing bringing those things up if it's because of mistakes. I don't walk out on practice and say, okay, guys, we stunk last year, so let's get better today. That's not what happens. But if we have the same type of behavior uh, that hurt us last year, you're darn right I'm going to bring it up to them. And if I see them when they're 78 years old, I may still remind them of one of those box outs they missed. Thank you. Appreciate it. We've got a lot of hands up, so keep your questions short, quick, and quick, please. Thank you. Deanna, then Brian Keyes. Coach, uh, recruiting wise, would they? We know you like to go to the gyms and watch recruits. How has this changed your recruiting techniques during this pandemic? It's not made it very comfortable for me. I always have been more comfortable going to see people in person. I don't mind going to uh, see a kid nine times, seven times, five times, whatever. I'd much rather drive to the airport about 30 minutes, get on a plane, fly two hours, get out, fly, uh, drive 30 minutes to a gym and watch a kid shoot 15 free throws and then repeat everything. Uh, it's the way I've always recruited. It's a more personal approach. And so this has been much more difficult for us. Brian and Isaac. Roy, last year you had Garrison playing a fair amount of the five when Armando was on the bench. What do you anticipate that to look like this season? Will he be sticking to the four mostly? Uh, it's too early to say. I mean, we got two big freshmen in Walker Kessler and Dayron Sharp. Uh, uh, they're bigger when they're in the game with Garrison. They would be five. Armando's bigger when he's in the game with Garrison. He would be a five. So about the only way that Garrison would end up being the five is if any of those three guys were not in the game. But we're at six practices and way too early that we're thinking about lineups right now. Isaac, then Aaron Beard. Coach, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, this time last year, you said uh, that the biggest thing heading into the year is that uh, the team was going to struggle scoring. And I think a lot of people just assumed that was coach speak because Carolina does nothing but score. <laughs> How do you feel heading into this year? Well, if I tell you something, you ought to take it to the bank because I'm going to tell you the freaking truth. And uh, <laughs> so that we did have trouble scoring last year. Right now, again, we're only six practices in. And, guys, we didn't play pickup in the fall against the NBA guys and get information from them about who's playing great and who's not. But I think we'll rebound the basketball this year like North Carolina teams usually rebound the basketball better than last year. And uh, I'm hopeful that the ball will go in the basket a heck of a lot more. And I'll, I'll give you a better evaluation of that after a couple more weeks. Sounds like a plan. I'm sorry. You. Aaron, then Greg Barnes. Hey, Roy, good to see you again. Um, I, uh, you sounded pretty optimistic when you were talking about the things are, you know, that you think there'll be college basketball and a lot of things that people uh -huh. will enjoy. A lot of the sports we've seen so far have been baseball, football, outdoor sports. The NBA obviously did it in a bubble, but mm -hmm. I'm curious if you have any trepidation or worry, I guess, in the back of your mind, concern about playing an indoor sport, you know, maybe the risk being a little bit different in that regard. Well, I do think when you talk to the scientists, the doctors, they have more concerned about anything that goes on inside. And so, again, that's the reason I'll be wearing this mask. And it doesn't bother me in the least. I think we have to follow uh, what the doctors and the scientists tell us. And I'm not a guy that uh, is going to flout those kind of things and act like I'm stupid and uh, uh, not wear a mask. And so uh, we do have a different situation by being indoors. We've already laid out what our bench is going to look like. There's people going to be separated. Uh, but I've never really had a problem with people being able to hear me when I want to be heard. So I'm not worried about that separation. But I think we'll try to be as intelligent as we can possibly be and realize that some stakes are probably going to happen. I can attest to that. Thanks, uh, Greg, then David Teal. Hey, Roy. Uh, Leakey's been injured, really. Uh, dealt with injuries throughout his career. Um, how does he look now, and, and kind of what does a, a healthy Leaky provide for you this year? Well, a healthy Leaky Black makes us a heck of a lot better basketball team, and that's what we need. And you're right, he hasn't really been healthy for long stretches ever since he got here. 
we're into practice six days, as I said. I think today's the seventh. It could have been seventh. No, I'm pretty sure today's the seventh. But uh, uh, we need him to be healthy. He and Garrison and uh, uh, Armando and Andrew Playtech all played significant minutes last year, and they've got to be better. And uh, we need them to make fewer mistakes, make better, make more of the positive plays. But when Leak is healthy, and what I've seen so far in our practice situation, and we've been careful with him in practice, when he's healthy, he is a big time player, and that's what we really need him to be. David Teal, then Kiera. Roy, you mentioned rebounding earlier. Armando averaged about eight and 24 minutes a game last season as a freshman. How would you evaluate his first year and what you have seen thus far? Uh, Rebounding-wise, he was okay last year. The biggest problem he had was finishing plays around the basket and staying out of foul trouble and staying out of the little nagging injuries. Uh, he's got to finish plays around the goal, and he's doing that much better than he is this year. Uh, with he and Garrison and Dayron and Walker Kessler and Walker Miller, there's some competition going on in practice every day. And uh, I think he's better, and he needs to be better. When you go from freshman to sophomore, a lot of times that's a big-time jump, and uh, we need Armando to do that. And it's competitive around that rim right now, unlike what we've had the last couple of years. Kiera, then Brendan. Hey, Coach. Uh, usually every year you have your person, uh, the, the team member that always speaks for you when you're not there. I know you're only six practices in, but have you found your, your go-to guy yet? Oh, there's no question in my mind. Garrison is a guy that I talk to about the team and get him to respond what he thinks is best for the team. And he's the one if I ask, okay, what do you think? And Garrison is the first person that I ask. Uh, Garrison and Andrew are both seniors and have been through it all. Uh, so those in Walker Miller, uh, KJ and Ryan, I guess that's five guys that we have that are seniors. I think that's it. Uh, but all of those guys a little bit, but no question it's Garrison right now. Brendan, then CL. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, good to see you again. Just wondering if you could provide us with an update on Anthony Harris's rehab and, and sort of when he is fully healthy and ready to go, what you foresee his role being uh, in the backcourt mix. Okay, he hasn't been released to be completely in practice. He's done some dummy things, meaning no competition, no one-on-one, -on -one, no five-on-five. -five. Uh, but uh, I think he's a few weeks uh, away from being released. Last year, he gave us enough to get us uh, excited about what he could do and played those either four games or maybe his five games is all he played. Uh, he's a kid that comes up with the loose ball, comes up with the rebound, comes up with the steal, makes the shot that you don't think he's going to make. And uh, so that would be helpful to us. But uh, it'll, it'll be – and I do believe it's weeks, not months, before he'll be able to get into full practice. So still to be determined if he'd be ready for the start of the season then? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. CL then Ross. Hey, Coach. Uh, I was wondering if you could kind of tell me what kind of point guard you feel like Caleb Love is. We've seen you have guys who are kind of big scoring point guards. We've seen the pass first kind of guys. Where, where do you feel like Caleb falls in? Line? Well, if I were to just use those two categories, I would say he's a scoring point guard after six practices. But guys, again, we didn't have any pickup <clears throat> excuse me, pickup games in the fall. And I usually get so much information from our NBA guys. And we didn't watch them play pickup in the fall. So uh, uh, for us, uh, I don't have as much information about a kid as I might have after six practices. But he, he is a big-time scorer. He's an attacker. Uh, I do believe he looks to pass and understands that that's part of the role. But if I had to put him in a Kendall Marshall or a Ty Lawson category of being more aggressive scoring the ball, that's who he would be. Thanks, Ross, man. I'm sorry, Ross and Ryan Wilcox. Hey, Coach, I mean, I'm going to ask about the freshman, even though you haven't seen him that much, but is there anything that surprises you about one of the uh, the six scholarship freshmen so far? Oh, I think there's a hundred things that surprise us in a positive way and in a negative way, too, when freshmen first start practice. You think, God almighty, he can't do that, or he doesn't know how to do this, or you have that, and then you also have something that you'll say, oh, boy, he may be a little better than we thought. But uh, that's a question I can talk about each one of them for the next five minutes. But uh, I think they're all working hard. We need them to stay healthy and not miss any time right now is the biggest thing. Uh, I think that uh, 
uh, one of the things the freshmen are bringing us are two things. One, the big guys can get to the board and rebound the ball and defend around the rim and score. And then I think our perimeter players can score too. And uh, uh, needless to say, the way we had a difficult time putting the ball in the basket last year, uh, uh, something we cannot repeat. All right, we have five questions left. Ryan, then Jasmine, Greg Hall, Art Chansky, and Alyssa Ray. Those are the five. Ryan, then Jasmine. Uh, Coach, you talked about the mistakes the guys were making last season. The players talked about it. But I'm curious what sort of positives you think you guys from take from, can, can take from last year and use to build on this year? <laughs> the positive is how pissed off it made me all summer. <laughs> and our guys didn't enjoy it. I used that word my wife doesn't like me to use. But uh, – uh, I'm hungry. I did not enjoy that. It's not something that was fun. So I'm hopeful that the hunger and the, uh, the motivation, our players will feel it the same way, but we got, we have great kids and, you know, it was not a fun year for us. It was not a normal year that, uh, uh, that North Carolina has. It's the first losing season our entire staff had ever had. And so for us, it was not something enjoyable, but we've, I've said three things. We had people getting hurt every time I turned around. I didn't even know who was going to practice till an hour before practice most of the time. I didn't do as good a job of coaching as I wanted to do, and they didn't do as good a job of following what we asked them to do. And so it's, it, you can't just snap your fingers and change things, but you can focus on this year and try to do everything to the best of your ability every single possession. Jasmine, then Gregory Hall. Hey, thanks for taking the time. So my question kind of built off of that, and it's more so about your approach to using last season as a tool for your team. So does it is it different the way you use it with the new guys versus the existing guys? And is there any particular reason for that? And then can you describe the sticker you have on your shirt? Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, you can't jump on a freshman for no box out and be mad about last year because they weren't here. But the veterans, if I'm still saying the same things now that I said last year, that does upset me a great deal. And the freshmen, I tell them, you just have to live with it, but be intelligent. Learn that you don't want me screaming at you or anything like that. So don't make the same mistakes that other people are making. And uh, uh, but, it, you know, come on now. We've had seven practices, and I've only gone crazy one time in seven practices. It's not like I get out there and say, okay, everybody on the end line, remember last year. Okay, everybody shoot one free throw. Remember last year. Everybody go to the bathroom. Let's remember last year. I mean, that's not what it is. It's, it's how well you do in practice every day. And I'm motivated because I did not enjoy it, and I think our returning players are motivated because they didn't enjoy it also. And thank you for noticing it says uh, – no bull, I voted. Our house is in Durham County, and I've already voted this morning and turned in my wife's absentee ballot. And so uh, I'm proud of the fact that I've already been out and voted, and I hope everybody gets to. Greg Hall, then Art. Sorry. Hey, Roy. I saw Kobe White uh, was at practice. I was curious how the young guard against him. Well, it was, it was an eye-opener for them about how hard he attacked the basket, and I told them that's what I wanted those guys to learn. Caleb and RJ particularly, it's, it's hard to guard Kobe. All right, so that's what I want the feeling the other team has about you two guys is how hard you attack the basket. And, uh, uh, you know, Kobe's been tested just like our guys have been tested, and it's been fantastic to have him working out in practice, and we've had that in the past with some of our uh, veteran guys coming back, and it's been fantastic for us. Last two, Art, then Alyssa. Hey, Rory. Um, the, watching, I know you watch a lot of college football, uh, and you, the coaches have had mixed reviews about how they're handling it in different leagues and so forth. Yep. Can you kind of look, talk a little bit about what the procedure, the protocols are going to be uh, that you know at this point uh, from the ACC and – and the differences that have been articulated about playing indoors, you know, going to a, a tournament like in Asheville and so forth, where there are going to be a lot of people around, can, and how your staff is handling all the changes they have to make and those kinds of plans. Yeah, it's already it's been very unusual to say the least. The, the the worst thing is I can't give you an answer because it'll change by next Monday, and then that will change by the following Monday. I don't think we have any idea if we're going to have fans. Uh, I know that uh, when we travel, we're going to have just our own little party and not have any anybody else traveling with us. I know that on the court, when I'm talking to the kids, we've spread the chairs out. I know that our bench area is going to be spread out during the game. 
I know that we've talked about uh, testing three times a week, and I was on a call last week. Now we're starting to talk about see if it's possible for do daily testing. And uh, so things are changing. Uh, there's no question that there'll be some trips that uh, uh, we might be on a charter and it will not be anybody except our actual team. There'll no be no radio, no doctors, no Indian chiefs, no policemen, no firemen, uh, anything whatsoever. Uh, we're trying to have our own little bubble. I know that we've talked to the people in Asheville and we've talked about uh, uh, creating a bubble there for that tournament. And I think it'll be very strict and I'm very happy about it being very strict. So, um, but our, our, our world will be changing. If you and I uh, talk again two weeks from now, I may give you a completely different scenario. One, one follow-up, Roy. Okay. Uh, the, one follow-up. The, the football coaches said that they talked a lot to each other uh, before the protocols were set on. Have, have you talked to the AC, among the ACC coaches and have you all decided to do anything together um, you know, if you're all going to wear masks and that kind of stuff. Well, Art, we had a conference call on Wednesday every week for 188 weeks this summer, it seemed like. I mean, we're talking every time I turn around, we have another ACC head coaches call. Uh, I'm, uh, again, the ACC protocols, they're going to change a little bit every day. Uh, but I'm going to wear a mask, period, the end. I don't care what anybody else, well, I care, uh, but I know I can only control myself. I'm going to wear a mask. And we have had conversations about testing. We've had conversations about a chip in your practice gear. We've had conversations of how we travel. We've had conversations of uh, your pro guys coming in. Are you going to allow them to be in your gym or they have to go in another gym? I mean, uh, we really have Wednesday almost every single week the whole summer we talk. Thanks, Coach. Thank Last you. question, Alyssa. Coach, what was your reaction to the Maui Invitational being moved to Asheville, and what are the benefits of opening up in a tournament like that? Well, the benefits of opening up in a tournament is the competition. There's no question about that. And, you know, I'm trying to decide, okay, who do I want to play? And I couldn't come up with anybody that I wanted to play. It was an art, uh, it wasn't uh, uh, Art Chansky and Aaron Beard and three other people. I had that choice. That would be who I would have taken. But uh, uh, so the tournament, it would be an evaluation for you quickly, and sometimes it's an evaluation that uh, uh, is not a positive. But we're going to have experience. Uh, we'll have experiences there that will help us get prepared for the rest of the season. When I first heard that Asheville was a, a choice, I was surprised. Uh, I think the people there uh, did a great job of selling to the Maui people and the sponsors that they've run the S Southern Conference Tournament, and maybe even another tournament as well. Everybody thinks that I had something to do with it. I never made one single phone call and I never took one single phone call. And I didn't know until probably 48 hours before it was announced that it was going to be Asheville. But, uh, uh, you know, I think they're just talking right now. Clint Walton, our assistant AD, was on a call yesterday with information. And I think they're trying their best to make it a very uh, tight bubble that they keep everybody in. And, uh, you know, if we've got to go somewhere. I don't mind going to Asheville. That's home. So that's, that's the only benefit. They've even have a room at the Grove park. It's got my name on it. I wonder if they'll give me my own room.